my new OSD autopilot. Uh, this is the FY21AP with the AP117 uh, video overlay. Here in the foreground is the pulsar motor and the EC. As you can see there's the EC there. Um, I've got two GPS receivers. This one here actually goes to the antenna tracker that's there and this antenna goes to the AP21 AP, uh, sorry FY21 AP. I'm using, I'm going to use the Corona RP8D1 that's there and to power my system I'm using the 12 volts for the battery and also I've got this battery here that's going to power the transmitter and the receiver. What I've done, I'm feeding 12 volts into this regulator and I'm dropping it down to only 9 volts and then from 9 volts I'm feeding it to another small regulator here that takes 10 volts and drops it down to 5. It's far cleaner. I found that with this regulator here when I applied 12 volts and selected 5 volts output the RF noise was so high it actually caused problems and I only remembered an old trick to try and find out what was causing all the issues with my last aircraft and I got my GY401 the Futaba Gyro in heading lock uh, connected a servo to it and as soon as I plugged this unit this regulator in the gyro brought close you know sitting close to this would start losing its position and begin to drift and as soon as disconnected it the drift would stop so I reckon this regulator outputting 5 volts or 3 volts is just noisy. I know it was getting very hot but it's not getting that hot anymore. So that's basically the kit there. Uh, I'm going to power up in a minute um, and get the GPS to lock and then we'll have a look at the, uh, at the on screen display. I've configured my JR9X2 uh, flap switch to give me the three modes that I need to be to enable me to move from RC remote control uh, to um, return return to launch and uh, stabilize the mode but to do that I actually need to put in two switches I need to activate switch N1 and N2 N2 overrides N1 we will see that in a minute. Um, I'm still working it all out actually. Uh, oh, because there's the EC there. And uh, that's it. Basically, everything is working, and I sh hopefully should get a pretty good picture um, and not too much noise. So let's, uh, let's just power up. Got to remember, switch the transmitter off. As you can hear, I've got a warning that I've got a switch on, so, oops, and that's uh, the AP uh, mode select switch has been left on. So we're on now. We're on, we're on, we're on. Pop that in there. Get this. Basically, my battery is sitting here to stop everything flying off the table. So if I just turn that round, power up, that's on, okay. Okay, that's counted four cells. Now I need to take this lead that's managed to hide itself in there. And plug, this is now plugging the OSD 
powering up the OSD, the, uh, the sorry, not the OSD, the video camera and transmitter. There we go. Oh, and the OSD. Mm. Right. As you can see, we've got the green light here. Showing that the regulator is on. You can just make out that flashing blue there, so the satellite, and that's the AP, uh, sorry, the um, on screen display. And over there, that little flashy light just there, that's my tracking antenna. So everything is in. My camera should be powered up. Power up the ground station now. I'm off camera actually, so I just do this and then we'll pan. Okay, so here we go. So that's the kit there now. Basically everything seems to be working fine. Regulator. AP. There's a tracking antenna. And this little gizmo here, that's uh, my 9 volts to 5 volts step down. Now that feels fairly cool or very very cold that feels very nice and cold that right tranny is on here we have the archos and uh, I'll shut down from there now okay so that's the archos just gone on on it's just gone into standby okay which is handy actually. So okay, um, that's the tracking antenna. Rate nineteen percent. Not very really good considering I'm right next to it, but um, it's okay. Uh, we just got to wait for the, sat the satellite to lock. And we need to look at that. There's a little bit. Uh, not quite right there. Something's not getting through, but we'll sort that out. 
with all these wires and electrics it's not exactly uh, unexpected to have uh, a few issues um, that's uh, the back of the video splitter the diversity cables and wires that's the other receiver the RX and of course uh, the Archos actually lives a little bit there still waiting on satellites actually surprised I haven't got some satellites yet usually it doesn't take this long but we'll see Okay, we've got our five satellites. Tracking antenna is working. Okay, obviously it will be facing in a strange direction because it doesn't really know the other position. Um, but what I've done, while well, having everything here so close to each other, obviously the tracking antenna uh, was unable to function very well. It, it is really sensitive, this. But uh, there you go. So. There's the antenna. Now I'm hoping that our little guy here for the FY21 has also found some satellites. That's 10 hertz. Oh, that's 10 as well. Sorry, I was about to say that uh, this one is 5, but it's not. Uh, I've changed all that around. Okay, so here we go. So plenty of wires loads of RF probably all around um, I'll power up the tracking antenna and the uh, the ground station and we'll see that's the other thing I just discovered uh, that the Archos is um, I think the Archos is actually interfering with my um, antenna tracker down here um, because it was making a really high frequency noise I'm going to investigate that. I've, I've had a few glitches and problems but I'm getting there bit by bit so I'll just uh, switch off